question is for Carlin. Carlin. One of the world's largest populations, diverse and distinct cultural heritage, stunning natural landscape with wonderful wildlife and a rich food and drink culture. This is China. How do you even begin to explore this vast geographical area? For 15 days, a group of young adventurers go to explore three main areas of China, learning about the people, the natural landscape and its culture armed with some books, a rucksack, and a camera. Join us. Shanghai. Known as an international megacity, from skyscrapers to Starbucks, Shanghai attracts visitors from all over the globe. How can we even begin to discover how people marry the traditional with the modern in this bustling cosmopolitan city? China has over 5,000 years of history, though much of the mystery still remains, as there's little written record. Thus we rely on relics and oral histories to learn more about this city. The Shikraman is a type of Lilong housing, which basically refers to interconnecting narrow lanes. The Shikraman itself means stone gate, referring to the arch-like door. The area depicts a fusion of Western and Chinese architectural styles because they were first built in the late 1800s to accommodate Chinese labourers wanting to work in the newly developed port. Everybody knows that Shanghai is a modern city. Yeah. They have a lot of foreign people and it's an uh, international city maybe. We live in the urban, mm -hmm. and uh, it's quite different from this like this one. I think uh, because I'm crazy about this, so I love the simple life. So I think this one maybe is quite uh, it's like a magic. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I really want to have a afternoon or a own day and stay here and make a uh, the art on tea ceremony uh, here. I think it's very good. Great, thank you. These areas teemed with families, creating both a community feel and a sense of place or belonging. In modern times, the traditional shikumen is competing with high-rise flats, fully accommodated with modern amenities. This house was built around 1925. So before our family moved here, a 
This is Daren. She and her family are fourth generation Chikuman residents. Her and her family moved out when they were told the Lilo would be knocked down for a new high rise, but it has been a few years since. So her father set up a family run museum to showcase the long, glorious history of Chikuman life. From art and calligraphy and community living to the old fashioned toilet, preserving this way of life comes with its own contradictions. So this is our family photo wall. This is my mom, my mom. grandmother, and they got married. The last part of um, wearing a wedding dress in 1953. It was during later, you know, the Cultural Revolution. So everybody wear the same, right? And we evolve under the mall. This is me here. This is the one. Oh. This is my grandpa, my grandfather's sister. So my grandparents, parents, or great grandparents, they moved here. Okay. This is a family from my mother's side. Do you know what is this for? Oh, to uh, marriage. Yeah. It's for the guest book. A guest book. Oh, okay. Guest book. 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 They have some Arabic. Uh, before in 1949, it's not banned to have more than one wife. So after the liberation, so a new law has been issued that one man can only have one wife. So my grandparents, they paint a picture book to explain oh. the new law to the illiterate people living in the countryside. Wow, okay. that's so <laughs> impressive. And so at that time we have the statue of Mao. And then, for example, the first part. So you cannot force your children to marry to someone. You cannot buy or bought <laughs> your daughter to sell to someone else's family. So there is a TV drama of 72 um, families living in one Shukuma home, Shisha Jia Fang Ke. Maybe you have heard of the stories. So one room is for one family. Okay, very very crowded, even for that small attic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What Hammond suggests is that there may be a loss of the community feel. So social bonds seem to be um, dissipating or moving apart from each other because of newly developed buildings. Um, he talks a bit about sense of place, which he refers to it similarly to geographical place. So I looked at it as sort of a sense of place as belonging. So this is the place you grew up, this is the place you feel is your geographical location and that's where you have all your sense of community. I think this, like, um, like um, what I'm gonna say is not very structured, but it's just like I feel this relates to what you said about em emotional attachment mm -hmm. because at first when you asked about, like when you were say saying something about emotional attachment, what reminds me is uh, like 
lead on this, this community life where pe people get physically attached to each other first and then emotionally attached. Mm. So it's like people seeing each other doing this and that, like cleaning this stuff and buying, like eating and buying things. And people shouting in the morning or like saying hello in the morning when they collect uh, uh, rubbish. Mm -hmm. Then like uh, it's, it's the part of history of your life that uh, shared between the uh, like in the community that makes you feel emotional attached before this trip I never um, has systematically studied Shanghai and uh, urban development and um, I have been here before several times but like my exploration is was rather scattered and like I may, maybe I'll have some random thought about how Shanghai actually mix all kinds of culture together and that's the like my impression of Shanghai was really like it doesn't really have its own culture or like own rich history but this time uh, since we went to the Urban Planning Museum and we visited the um, Shi Kuman Family Museum so um, both from the macro level or micro level um, it's a more systematic um, view of like what is happening in Shanghai during the development and I think I really have a better idea about how the urban planning was implemented and how people's lives, lives were affected by the um, city development and like what the community has been through during these years so I actually feel it very interesting and um, next we're gonna go to the rainforest so I'm thinking that like Maybe we'll encounter a very different community there, either um, the community of people or the community of the natural lives. Chongzhu. A rather remote region close to the border of Vietnam, this area boasts gorgeous karst land formations and houses a rare endangered little monkey called the white-headed langur. Hello, my name is Liu Han. And I'm really looking forward to this journey. And today we are here in Guangxi province. And you see those beautiful mountains. And I'm really looking forward to have some monkeys here because I really love animals. So I think it would be great to see the monkeys. Yeah. And I think this province is really pretty, though the weather is humid, but it's better than raining. So I hope the weather will be keep being this good for the following week. And I really hope that we can see the monkeys. I love the monkeys! Our esteemed guest lecturer, Professor Huang from the China Academy of Science, introduced us to the eating patterns and family structure of the langurs. They eat mainly young leaves and spend most of their day sleeping, playing and eating. Particularly fascinating for us is the way the adult males stay with the group of females and children for four to five years to protect and feed them before being kicked out back to the bachelor's group. Wait, yeah, hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So what we are doing? We are looking for the monkeys, the white-headed langur. At 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ivy. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Ivy. Hey. How do you feel? How do you feel? Ah, I feel so refreshed, you know. Refreshed? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, like, I got up 5.30 in the morning and now I never feel sleepy because the air is so fresh. Ah. And it's so beautiful. Yeah. Look at the world of green. <laughs>
While learning how natural scientists work in the field, we found that the white-headed langur has another interesting characteristic. The babies are bright orange, while the adults have black fur with a white quiff-style hairdo. It made spotting them less of a challenge. I saw two baby monkeys. How does the conservation of these animals work alongside the main industry of Guangxi, which needs plenty of land, sugarcane plantations? The nature reserve is the one big uh, difference is the, to deal with the local people's life. And because uh, in the afternoon, uh, in the mornings, everyone to see the, the family in, in, the, in the jungle is very poor. Very poor and then the other uh, cities in the Guangxi province. So, how to deal with the protect the white langur and uh, help the uh, uh, and, uh, and the local people's lives is very important to to, to protect the white langur. So, so we, we uh, our nation reserve is now is to to pro programs to uh, protect the white langur and uh, help the local people's lives. Uh, help the local people to reach to, to play together. Based on what you're saying about deep, like talking to local people yeah. and getting them used to the environment yeah. at first. Do you have any cultural issues in changing people's attitude? For example, Professor Huang mentioned that they used to make langa wine for um, cures and remedies. So how do you change people's minds about something that's a tradition? Ting 基本就没有
We're working on quadrants today to look at samples of plants in the Langer's natural habitat. We're going to outline an area by metre and then look at the different squares to look at the different plants per metre. That will help check the biodiversity. Okay, hello, Jessica. Hello. We're in the shrub. Where is the shrub? It's so cool. <laughs> This area is not only known for these playful creatures, but is the home of one of China's prominent minority ethnic groups, the Zhuang. The Zhuang ethnic group is the largest minority group in China, where 90% live in this particular area with their own language, crafts and festivals. Okay, I'll explain how you harvest the corn. Firstly, you need a uh, fragment of wood and so that you can peel up the coverage, the clothes of the uh, corn, and then you just peel it off. And da -da -da! <laughs> this is the corn, and just get it off. Yay! <laughs> While rice and corn form staples of the diet, one speciality is sticky rice cake. In fact, common knowledge suggests that sticky rice is only for guests and for God. Say hello, Jessica. Hello, I'm busy filming the people downstairs, and um, they are having fun talking with each other, uh, with local people, and making food and dessert with local people. And I think um, people here are very welcoming, and um, they made a lot of food for us, which is which is not very usual in their daily like, daily. Especially, uh, we had a pre-lunch. Now we are going to have um, lunch. Yeah, maybe and another dessert. lunch. Another lunch and a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Hangzhou and Yixing. Longjing is a special green tea in a certain area of Hangzhou which has a delicate chestnutty flavour and can only really be picked at certain times of the year. Okay, okay. So we pick up the top, like the tiny one in the middle and then the two ones around it, like this. Also, in summer, this tea, they don't drink at all. Usually, they will cut this with the scissors. Yeah. 
，叫做雀石龙井啊，雀雀鸟雀的雀，雀石。Tea is an essential component of Chinese culture, which emphasizes key principles such as harmony, respect, gratitude, ethics, and art. The discovery of tea is attributed in many legends to the Chinese emperor Shen Neng, who was sitting under a tree when some tea leaves blew into his hot water, and thus tea was born. Prior to tea being commonplace. Tea was a magical drink among scholars, or as solely a medical drink, until the Tang Dynasty. From approximately the year 600 to 900, while many countries now enjoy tea, it came to Europe slowly, and there have been tales of smuggling from China by the British. Tea in China is much more than a simple drink, with beautiful tea art, more like a casual serving amongst family and friends, to a full tea ceremony combining poetry, paintings, calligraphy, and even Buddhism. I came from the Changchun, where it's so beautiful in the winter because it's all snow. And、um, my English, my spoken English, maybe a little, little power. So I'm little ner nervous, but I'm I'm excited for the next few days. And、um, this time,、uh, today we are going to the tea house, and I pick up the tea leaves. Um, I, is it? I'm enjoying it. So I think it's really.、Uh, all this mountain is really beautiful, and my mother is love the tea tea culture. So she recalled me to to this to、um, having fun with us. Okay. Alright. Thank you. Come in. 好了好了。哦，那个是什么呀？植物油。植物油。植物油。就是就是。就是。就是。Plant oil, vegetable oil. Very funny, Tom. Oh, 用手炒呀？用手炒。哦，用手炒。用手炒，就是慢慢慢慢的给它，给它那个放下去，受生。Okay, can you want to get to show me? Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Yeah. Okay. 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 But not touch the top. No, no, the top is the top. Okay, this is fine. Okay, okay. 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 I'm gonna do Jessica's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are many categories of tea: black, oolong, pua, which is a type of fermented tea cake; green, white, among others. Slightly different to an infusion, which is more like a herbal tea, such as lemongrass, ginger, and so on. Some may question the importance placed on a teapot. However, tea art includes the beauty and efficiency of equipment. The area of Yixing has international fame for its purple clay teapots, due to the long legacy, supposedly from the Song Dynasty in the 10th century. These teapots are mainly used for black oolong and pua teas, and are said to absorb the tea essence each time it's used, therefore increasing its value. 
The teapot cannot be washed, rather rinsed with fresh water. And not only is one type of tea used per teapot, but it can only ever be that specific tea leaf variety, so as not to disrupt the absorption process. While we have only touched on the surface of what China is, our explorations can only continue into the magnificent history, culture and natural beauty that exists.